Hello everyone, as you know, I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and in today's video we're going to look at this capacitive touch switch. It has two modes of operation, it could be used as a momentary switch, and it could be configured to be used as an on-off switch. It could also be configured to have its output to be high on startup, or it can be low on startup. And so there is some configuration to do, we could also look at its sensitivity, how sensitive it is. So we're going to get it wired up, we're going to configure it in different ways, put it to the test, turn it upside down down inside out and so without further delay let's jump right in okay just looking at the back of it here you can see that there is uh, nothing here except the word touch it does look like sub to the uh, outer coating here that there is a big copper plate and we'll see how that feeds through possibly to this side that's just acting as a capacitive antenna if you will looking over at this side let me just pop up a full picture here you can see that we have three terminals here. We can get simple header pins. This is actually four, but I'll break one of these off and we'll get it on here. We'll put three header pins on here. But as you can see, the top hole here is the ground. The middle is the I.O. input output, and the bottom is VCC. And so for the power for this, 5 volt, we're going to hook up ground as a negative and VCC as a positive. And then we'll look at the output on the middle pin to see what we're getting as we go through its different configurations. Now you can almost see that resistor value. What's written on it is 121, which is 12 and 10 after that 1 to 120. So that's a 120 ohm surface mount resistor. Over here we have a capacitor. We'll look at the value of that capacitor in a little bit. Now I just want to bring your attention here to the A and the B. These are the two option pads which give you the configurability of this capacitive touch switch. These are actually solder bridges. So if I bridge these two pads, let's say on A, we're going to be shorting these two out. This A pad sets the default output as being either high or low. The default out of the packet is momentary. When we get close to the touch pad, the output goes high, and when we move away, it goes low, and so that's momentary. If we bridge these two solder pads right here it'll set the output type to being latched so let's try that right now I turned the lights down for a second here just to show you to get a little contrast but I have this thin piece of copper wire strand and I bent it at a little right angle there and that little top piece is going to be the, the piece that bridges the two pads of the A solder and so I'm just going to tin it real quickly to get it ready to be soldered on and then we'll solder it on and trim it. Here it is soldered on still attached uh, I didn't really get a great zoom in on that and so it's ready to be trimmed so I have this copper wire bridging one A pad to the other A pad. There's a pair of pads for A of course. Here I am doing the exact same thing to the B solder uh, pads. Uh, it's a different capacitive touch switch so I do have many of them. I got a 10 pack of them so I'm going to have two separate switches. One with the A pads shorted and another one with the B pad shorted. Just to get the ball rolling, we'll put a VCC on this. That can range from 2.5 volts all the way up to 5.5. And so logic level 3.3 is perfect for Arduinos or Raspberry Pis. And of course, our standard 5 volt logic voltage uh, is also usable here. So we'll give it 5 volts and we'll see what happens. So one thing I want to point out right now is the default out-of-the-box condition of this switch. We can see that the LED is out, the output is going to be low, and it goes high when we get close and touch it. So again, the output is low by default. So I quickly threw it on a breadboard here. I have 5 volts coming in, and from this side, the VCC is the right-hand pin, and the ground is the left hand pin. I turned the lights down a little bit just so you can see the LED shining from the underside here. So you can see as I get close to it or even touch it, the LED goes high. So its default is low, LED is going high when you come by. And so of course, we'll always do something. I'll just stick an LED on it for now, but we know once we get an LED going on and off, we can move mountains, we can open bridges, we can send tweets, we can make anything happen. Once we know, we can turn a switch on and off. And so again, we'll just take a simple LED with the current limiting resistor. I'll get that, pop it on right here, and we'll move on from there. 
Here it is with an LED attached. The current limiting resistor is right in line with it here. We have the anode here, and you can see as I get close, it's turning the LED on and off on its own board, but also this LED. So the output is definitely activating in unison with the LED that's on board. Very simple. All right, so here I have the B, and it's not abundantly clear. Let me move in here a little bit. You can see the shine across the bar of the B that we just soldered. Well, I'm going to pop this back into the breadboard, and we'll do the exact same thing we just did. Let's zoom out here a bit. Pop this bad boy in here. It's still got power. There we go. So I did get close to it, and it went into the on state, and it latched in. So it became an on. Now let's see what happens. There we go. Off. On. Off. On. Off. There we go. So you can see just by shorting across the two solder pads of the B configuration pad, it changes it from being a momentary switch to being an on-off switch. Very versatile. For less than 15 cents, uh, this is quite impressive. Now again, I'm going to kill the power here. We'll pull out the positive. So no power, nothing happens. When I give it power, the output is low. And so now we're looking at modifying the default output. On power up, what state is that output going to be? As we just said, it's low in the configuration out of the box. To make it high on power up, we look at the A pads. And so we already shorted these two B pads. This one has the A only shorted across the A pads. So we're going to pop this in here again. Still has power. And so with B not shorted out, we were going to be back into a momentary mode of operation. But you can see that by default, and let me just go through a power cycle here so you can fully understand. There's no power to it whatsoever. Nothing is happening. I'm going to give it power. Let me kill the lights here a little bit. When I give it power, the output goes high. So by default, it's high. And when we touch, it goes low. So now you can see the effect of shorting out the A pads when you're configuring this. You could short both A and B, and on power up it would go high, and when you touch it it would go off and be in the toggle mode as opposed to how it is right now, the momentary mode. I'm not going to do that. I think we should move on from here. Here we have the data sheet, which I'll include in the description below. But here it touches on the sensitivity. And so the sensitivity can be adjusted by the capacitance. So that one capacitor, which is a 50 picofarad capacitor, is there for sensitivity. And you can adjust that capacitance from 0 to 50, adjusting its sensitivity. Okay, so here I have a pretty substantial fan. Uh, it's 120 volt. I think we'll try and control this big heavy fan. If I look quickly here, 1.9 amp, 3000 RPM, 115 volt. We'll try and control this fan with this little guy. But of course we can't uh, pass so much current with this. So we'll hook it up to a transistor and a relay and just get this starting and stopping. Hey, why not? See if we can get it done with this uh, capacitive touch switch. So let's get this hooked up. Okay, here we are. I did hook up this fan. This is a 120 volt AC fan and it's dangerous. I just want to point that out. But I did want to make the point that with this 5 volt little control circuit and little capacitive touch switch, which is activating this NPN MOSFET, this MOSFET is triggering this relay. The relay contacts have a rating that's great enough to handle the current required for this fan. And so right now I do have a live 120 on this black and yellow wire here. There's no ground. I'm just doing this for demonstration. This is in the on-off configuration. This is a pretty powerful fan, so it might get loud. I won't leave it on for very long. There we go. So you can see that this high current fan can be controlled by just this tiny, tiny little capacitive touch switch 
by uh, switching up through these components here, this NPN MOSFET and this relay. That's really it. I just wanted to show that we can control anything and not just an LED. And so at this point, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I hope that you had fun. Uh, take the time right now to click that subscribe button if you learned anything at all. I really do appreciate your support. Check in with my channel once in a while. If you didn't subscribe, see more videos, follow me on social media. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.